I got every trophy in the entirety of Recom in one sitting. This required me to get every single card in the game, level grind both Sora and Riku to level 99, and obtain many more trophies. I hope you enjoy my suffering. Okay, so now we can see that we have no trophies. Um, 48 trophies are on trophies you have to get. So for us to do a plat run on Recom, we need to finish Proud mode for Sora and Riku, uh, which means that we will start on Proud. The Proud trophy stacks with Standard and Beginner, so we don't have to worry about being in the game three times over, thank god. I think you have to do that on the PS3 version. Now, there are some really important things that I have to keep in mind. I need to beat the game without dying and without running away from any encounters. So every encounter that I do, I have to win. Uh, that is only until I beat the game. But for now, I have to be saving a lot so that I absolutely make sure that I do not lose progress if I ever die. Because we are on proud mode. All right, it's important that I don't break anything in this room. Okay, so we're gonna be doing a soft reset into loading the game a ton because that will get the RNG to be exact every time we load the game. Soft reset combination is, I think, O1, R1, O2, R2 starts. It's pretty easy to do. So now we're gonna roll five times, hit the lamp, roll once, hit that. One, two, three, four, five, six. There should be a blizzard here. Yes, okay, we did it right. Hooray! Hey, there's a trophy, nice. Um, for some reason, okay, the game has like two setting types, A and B, and I prefer B over A. Let me know which one you prefer in the comments down below. All right, so now that we cleared all the enemies, we're going to manipulate the room. And this is to get more blizzards, because uh, blizzard is our main way of doing damage. There should be a blizzard right here. And it was. Yep, another blizzard, nice. Okay, we did it. Hooray! We did all the manips properly, we didn't have to reset for any of them. That's really good. So now that we have Blizzaga, you'll see how OP Blizzaga is. So the game is actually faster on Japanese because the text, like right here, is faster. But I don't want to play on Japanese because if I miss anything at all in the game, then I will not know how to read what I'm missing. Because this is how OP Blizzaga is. It just one-shots. So, the idea right now, <clears throat> and the idea for like the any percent speedrun, is that you grind all of the map cards you need in the first two worlds, so this world and then Agrabah after. And then, ideally, you will never ever need to grind any more cards again. <clears throat> and we farm in early worlds because they all die to Blizzaga really quickly, and they're really fast encounters. So we need every type of map card for Plat, and one of the map cards is called a Random Joker card. And that card is really important <clears throat> because not only does it bypass the 99 door in Castle Oblivion, but it's very rare on Proud Mode. It's a 0.7% chance, I believe, and we need to have it for Plat because we just need every map card. So if I don't get it, then I'm screwed. The thing is that we'll be grinding so much as Sora that I should get it no matter what. But with Riku, it's pretty likely that I don't get it. So that would be really unfortunate. Is that? That's a shadow card. Okay, we got a shadow card. Uh, so we also need every enemy card in the game. And thankfully there is RNG manipulation for every enemy card in the game. But if we get any of them throughout the grind, then that's gonna help because it'll save time overall. One thing that I really think is annoying in this game is that you have to physically grab the EXP. I think that's silly. Oh, we got it! Nice, okay. That's pretty early to get it. That's really good. Okay, so we're gonna do some manip for enemy card. For uh, red nocturnes. Um, okay, we need sleeping darkness for this room next to the save point. And now I can do the manipulation. Okay, manipulation for the red nocturne. So what's actually important for enemy manipulation is that we have the correct deck. The deck that we have equipped is actually incredibly important. That's the wrong encounter. For all the enemy card manipulation, uh, we need to get lucky with the encounter. I don't know what determines the encounter that you get, but it seems to be luck. The deck... What matters is that you have the correct type of card in the correct slots in your deck. Nice, we did it. All right, there's one. Well, now we have two. That is our first enemy card manipulation, and we're gonna be doing that a lot throughout the entire run. 
And we have three Red Nocturnes. I don't think we actually need three. I think we only need two, but I'm getting three just in case because... I mean, especially because we're playing on Proud Mode. I haven't explained what we need the Red Nocturnes for, but I'll explain it later on when we start using Fires. Oh yeah, so I also need to use the party member cards as we get party members. Because again, we need to use every single card in the game. Don and Goofy we can use anywhere, so they're not a big deal. I'll probably use them eventually. But when it comes to like Disney party members from other worlds, I will need to make sure I use them. So we have a Blizzaga deck and Axel is weak to Blizzard. Who would have thought? Nice. Okay, so we got a trophy. Hooray. Card of Memories, I think it said. I should have done a slate. Yeah. Okay, so... I always call them... I, I always... My whole life, I've called them slates. But I've learned that they're called slights. Which makes sense because of sleight of hands. But I'm still getting used to it. So I'm probably going to say... Uh, slate a lot. But I mean slight. It doesn't matter. It's the same word. Oh my god, what?! Holy cow! Okay, that's huge. We got a green weapon, green Wecrium card. I can't talk. That's crazy though. We just got a card that saves some time with the enemy grinds. Imagine we just got every enemy card. That was Aladdin. What am I doing? Oh my god! I got a yellow Nocter Opera. All right, so I haven't fully explained what we're doing right now, but what we are doing is grinding map cards, and we also need to grind Moogle points. I should be using meeting grounds to make sure I get more Moogle points. But we'll, we, we'll need to grind a lot of map cards anyway, so it should be fine for now. That was a pretty good Aladdin. I hate that he can't change targets in the... What? How do you clank that? What? Okay. Okay, so we're actually going to nip the Moogles now. After using a lot of Aladdins to get a lot of Moogle points, we have enough to buy stuff. We need to bottom left. Then we're going to dodge roll. We need to buy bottom right. <laughs> This is not BS, I promise. This is actually manipulating the game. But yeah, so what I did back there was I minute the Moogles to give me a bunch of fires and a bunch of blizzards. Mainly fires and a few other things. So that I have enough uh, spells for my decks. And now my decks are made for basically the rest of the entire 80% portion of the run. All that I need to do now is grind map cards, which we still need a lot of them. Oh my god, what?! Holy crap! I can't believe I got the Fat Bandit card. Oh, what? I've never had that happen where there's two barrels next to each other. What? Oh, okay. I thought I would fight. That's so weird. Did I. They were separate, right? How did I kill both of them? Oh my god! Dude, I'm actually getting all of the enemies' cards. It's actually insane. This is gonna be the most insane plat run ever. So, every boss fight in the game. For the most part, other than the ones that are immune to fire, we're going to be spamming fire the entire time. This is why we needed the Red Nocturnes, which we're using right now. And this is why we nipped the Moogles to give us fires. Because we can spam fire on every boss fight. And then for bosses like Axel, we can spam Blizzard. Why is he walking like that, man? He just walks so weird. Fire spam for the win. If you think that any other Kingdom Hearts game has fire spam, then you have not seen Recon. This game has the most fire spam out of any Kingdom Hearts game ever. It's really weird how fire is consistently OP in every single Kingdom Hearts game too. That's why it's kind of weird. I like how the Queen's just sitting up there. Must be fun. Alright, so even the guy that has fire arms is uh, gonna die to fire. Watch this. This fight's a little bit scary, but once again, just spam fire. That guy was right behind me, man. He was trying to kill me. So, you might remember Luxine being hard when you played this game. As a kid. Much like every other boss, you can just spam fire. On proud mode, she does some damage, though. I'll be honest. Oh, we got key to rewards! Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be grinding for that a lot, actually. I think we need, like, 13 in total? I might be wrong. Maybe a bit more. Um, so I'm actually entering fights because I want to use Aerial. So, I messed up because I need fires here, not blizzard. Alright, we're fine now. I was worried there because, yeah, you need the fire deck. Like, if I put on the wrong deck and I die, then I have to reload my last save because you have to do un um, undefeated or whatever. If you walk really far away, he'll always jump. 
And you can actually loop him by making him jump over and over again. Captain Hook time. You ready? I'm ready. He actually gets stun locked. <laughs> Four fires, I think. Five. Okay, so we have to actually walk up to Piglet for Plat. There we go. Nice. <laughs> I got lucky right there. So I'm actually going to grind Moogle points here later on to run, but not, not now. But I found a Manip to get a lot of points there. Vegetable time. This mini game is actually kind of hard because you have to move left and right and then press square or circle depending on if it's the cabbage or the pumpkin. And also Pooh walks in the middle sometimes. Because uh, So for this one we need 150. Fun fact, uh, Lester- or not Lester, I think the day before Lester was my first time ever doing this minigame. Or any minigame in Recom, in 100 Acre for that matter. No! Okay. <laughs> GG's. Alright, <clears throat> we hit it. GG. I wasted about 10 minutes there. Oh, a trophy. We got Veggie Master. Alright, now that the, the catastrophe of that last minigame is over, <clears throat> we can do this minigame. This minigame is actually really hard too, in my opinion. But, um, at least it's not as, like, slow and dumb as the other one. Um, yeah, so for the plat, you need to get every single honey orb. <clears throat> you can't miss a single one. Easy minigame. Alright, so I tried doing this minigame without writing down every input, and it was way too hard. I'm sure it's possible if you're really good at memorization, but I can't do it. So I'm gonna write down every input on a notepad here, on my computer. Uh, so we need 120 jumps. So, by the end, you have to memorize 20 inputs-ish around there. And it wouldn't be as hard if Tigger was faster. But it takes like a minute before him, for him, like from the first input to the last input at the end. I should be fine as long as I get it. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, rip. Okay, now we got it. There's a trophy. Alright, so for this mini game, we need to get 2,000 honey. It actually isn't that hard. Um, but this is a lot like the dives in DDD. It's like the exact same thing. There we go, Skydiver. Yeah, this one I have to do twice because, um... The first time there's not enough bees to kill. Why don't they put Honey Store in DBBS or DDD? Because it's stupid, man. Okay, we got, um, another trophy, nice. Yeah, so first minigame, all you gotta do is, uh, spam this late over and over again and you're good. Bee Buster. Okay, we did all the mini games. Hooray. They're not that bad if you get it first try. And they're not that hard to get first try, honestly. But they're just so long, so if you mess up, like, towards the end, you're fucked. Oh, yeah, Vexen just dies to fire. Then you can, like, stun lock him this way. Not really. Yeah. What the fuck is that? He doesn't have that in 2FM. Jesus Christ. Bookbinder, okay. We need a lot of different Keyblades. We need every Keyblade in the game. So, it, we, if we're lucky, we get all of them. So, we need to use the Key Rewards here because we get Mushu. And Mushu is what we need for Mega Flare. We don't need Mega Flare yet. But, the thing is that I want to get more Mushu cards. I shouldn't need that many all together. But, I want to at least have, I think, two. Okay, I'm going to level grind it a little bit here. Because I want to be a level 37 to be able to have the, uh, the slight... Caught tornado something. So during the level grind is when we're gonna hope for a Joker. Our next scene is actually pretty hard in proud mode. We should be okay because we have three red nocturnes. But she is a little bit hard on proud. Just a tad. Okay, we're doing a lot of damage. <laughs> that does a lot of damage though. One more. That's not what I meant to do. I think I'm dead. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Now we got her. So, now that we're in Castle Oblivion, we're going to level grind to level 57. And... We're doing it by using the Tornado command, which we got at level 37 uh, in Destiny Islands. We did a big grind some grinding there. And we're going to be here a while. This is the Sora Pig 3 grinds. 
before we do the Mega Fair Grinds. And as I have mentioned, uh, you don't get Mega Fair until level 57. That's why we're grinding into that level. Oh, we got the Joker! Let's go! Holy shoot! I freaking got the Joker. Okay. That just gave me, like, renewed energy. Interceptor? Yeah, we got a trophy. Okay. We're over halfway to level 99 as Sora. But, and this is a big but, from 90 to 99 is like a third of the entire grind. Yeah, I should hit 57 on Marluxia, I believe. You can catch him before he runs away, but it's pretty hard. Oh, there we go. Oh, nice, we got it. Yeah, it worked. Stop. Okay. We got him. Yeah, we got level up from that, so we got 57. There we go, Mega Flare! So now we can grind levels much quicker in Destiny Islands with Mega Flare. Yeah, so even in Marduxia, you can fire spam. By the way. I think the music is really good in this fight, though. The music is so good here. I personally think Marduxia is like one of the best bosses, final bosses in any cage game. It's really cool. Ooh, a level. Or wait, what? A trophy. <laughs> Nice, you beat Marluxia. We beat the game, let's go! We did it! Wait a second. Your hopes are doomed to the darkness. This boss is so cool. What do you think that is above him? Is that like his mom? His sister. What? So can Shit. Oh my god. No. Okay. That was it. We should have done it, I think. Hooray, we beat Sora's story. Now it should give me the trophies that I need. Uh, but we need to watch the credits, which take like five minutes. They're really short. Okay, so now that we beat Sora's story, we're gonna do Riku's next. And then, uh, thankfully, we can do all of Riku's story in one go. We can hundo the entire Riku portion. And then we're gonna go back to Sora and then finish everything once and for all. So now we can run away from battles, we can die, all that jazz. Which makes this a lot nicer. I don't have to worry about that at all. So, Riku's story is different than Sora's in that we have pre-made decks. I think it's kind of more fun to play when you get um, his darkness thing. So what we're doing right now, we're grinding fights in Hollow Bastion until I get two attack boosts. And then I will be grinding cards in Traverse Town. The run for Riku's story is actually a lot more consistent than Sora because you don't have to rely on jokers as much. So we got our first fight, Dragon Mao. Okay, so the interesting thing about Riku's story is that you fight bosses with pre-made decks. Um, so it makes some fights actually like really difficult because you don't have any say over the deck you have. There we go, nice. Um, another thing about Riku's story though, you need to get one of every enemy type in every world and we can't miss them. I mean, we can, we just have to go back, but obviously rather not. Hey, trophy. So in this world we need a Soldier, Red Nocturne, and Blue Rhapsody. But we're definitely gonna get them because we are gonna level grind here. Or not level grind, sorry, map card grinds. Um, Sora, Sora, I always- I almost always want to, um, attack the enemies. But as Riku, I actually don't. Most of the time. Because I want to go into dark mode as soon as possible. 
And then use uh, Dragon Mouse, so I do a ton of damage. That's the strat for grinding as Riku. And this grind doesn't take that long, honestly, overall. So in the 80% run, you would grind about 80 cards, depending on if you get a Joker or not. I think I'm going to grind 99. Uh, because I really need a Joker. If I get a Joker, then I think I'll cut it short. When we grind with Sora to level 99, we're going to be ending the fight every time. Because of that, the odds of us getting a Joker are pretty high. But as Riku, when we grind to 99, we're not going to be ending the fight. In fact, we're only going to end up getting like 150 map cards-ish around there. And so the odds are that I should get one because the odds are 0.7%. And I think that means you get one every 130 cards-ish. But that's just the average odds. That does not mean that I'm going to get it. So I'm really hoping I get it. Otherwise, I have to grind for it. And that'll be annoying. Oh, we got it. Okay, we're good. Oh my god, we did it. Okay, I'm so happy we got it. If I didn't get that, it would be fucked. Actually, it would be so bad. You, you don't even know how bad it would be. It would be so bad. Uh, so you might be wondering, how are you going to fight the bosses on proud mode? It seems kind of hard. Well, it's not hard when you do this. Hang on. When you do- hang on. When you do this- hold up. When you, when you do this. So you can stunlock bosses by doing two hits of a ground combo as Riku. Uh, air combos might work too, actually. The way that it stuns them is because the second hit of the combo stuns enemies. And they expect you to do... Like the finisher, which unstuns them, but if you just don't do the finisher, then... They can't break out. Oh, it doesn't work on him. Okay, we got him. <laughs> yeah, the, the sunlock doesn't really work on Hook, I guess. Oh yeah, uh, Parasite Cage is actually pretty hard as Riku. But... Um, I've been putting a lot of my levels into HP, so that should help me out a lot here. What's happening? <laughs> Stop! Oh my god, Riku. There we go, we got him. I, I just kind of went in. I didn't really care. <laughs> Alright, so we got Riku fight. We're gonna stunlock him, just like before. Uh, it's actually better to... do it from behind, because... for whatever reason, enemies are usually stunned longer from behind. Uh, if you want to be safer too, you can use Jafar for attack bracer. Because that way, they won't be able to break out. So, what you want to do in Trick Master is do an air combo hit on his uh, head, or whatever. Like, on the top, to knock him down. Oh, okay. Yeah, you want to make sure he doesn't knock the table down, because that would suck. Um, you also don't want to do slates with high numbers, but I already fucked that up. Alright, so for Gate Boogie, we're actually going to use Dark Aura. It's a different strategy than uh, other bosses we've been doing so far. Dark Aura for the win! Oh my god, the damage is crazy! So we have to grind out duels for the duel trophy. So it's 100 duels, we have to win them all, and there's a, a way to, that we're going to do it here. This might not be the most optimal way of doing it, but I don't know what other way that you should go about it. So we're going to do it this way. Okay. I need to get used to it, because I don't know exactly how you do it. Oh my god! You have to win them too, which is annoying. <laughs> Initiating them would probably be much faster, but you have to actually win them as well. The thing is, you also grind cards, so if I didn't get a Joker yet, this is where I would get a Joker, hopefully. But we did get a Joker, so I'm just trying to get, do it as fast as possible now. No, SpongeBob! Why? I got it. We are out of here. Alright, Hades. Nice, okay. <laughs> That's fine. Um, you're supposed to stunlock him, like all the other bosses, but uh... When he becomes red, you can't stunlock him, so you just gotta keep hitting him. So why Dark Aura him? That's a s oh my god, that did so much damage! We don't want him to power up again, because he's invincible when he does. Yeah, my attack power is really, really high, so I'm doing a sh lot of damage. Wow. Nice, okay. Okay, so we can't stun like uh, Zexion. But he has a really cool fight, IMO. I think it's a really fun fight. Oh, 
Oh, oh I shoved in that. Oh, I thought I could dodge that by dodging into it. That's weird. Do you not have iframes? Maybe not. Nice. Okay, we got him now. You have to go more aggressive. You gotta be kidding me. Card master. Oh, that means we've done every card, I think. And storyteller. Oh my god, we're getting all the trophies. Alright, here we go. 99 Riku. This is it, guys. At this point in the run, I had to level grind Riku to 99, which required me to kill the first wave of Heartless, and then escape the battle and re-enter and do the same thing over and over again for 6 hours straight. The terrible thing about this is that I have to actually concentrate on the game the entire 6 hours and try to be optimal on each fight, otherwise it would make the grind even longer. This was easily one of the worst things I've ever had to do in Kingdom Hearts. The problem is I have to dodge your wyvern, or whoever you're fighting when you're exiting, and I keep- at the not miss too. It sucks. So we're gonna go fight Ansem really quick to get a small break and then get back at it with the level grinding. I don't know if he gives you EXP too. I'm pretty sure he doesn't. I'm like 99% sure. I don't know why he would. So the only downside to fight him now is that I'm a lower level. Um, at 99 he's like a pretty trivial fight. But now he's actually a little bit hard. I should be able to beat him though. I'm not afraid. Okay, he's almost dead now. I can still die if he does if he stunlocks me, but nice. Got him. And he does not give you EXP. Oh, hard hitter. Right. Oh, we got the trophy. Yo, that wasn't intentional, but it happens. This is it. Here we go. This should be level 99. Is that it? Yes. We did it. We did it. There it is. Level Master. Holy cow. We actually did it. That's crazy. In order to get every card in Sora Story, we need to have completed watching the Days movie. And instead of doing that before starting to run, I decided to... Uh, do it during the run. So you can actually skip through the movie if you go to chapters and then start, um... Yeah, go to chapters and you just skip around. It's okay, watch how fast this would be. Hang on. Look at this. Alright. Okay, so yeah, you have to um, go through your diary, the report or whatever, and then go through the characters here. So yeah, so now that we got a new theme, that means that that verifies that you did it. Okay, yeah, there's two chests, which means that we are good now, because we're gonna get a uh, Super Glide and then Star Seeker. Wait. Oh, okay. I was pressing square to Super Glide, like in KH1, but apparently you press circle. I feel like I never got Super Glide before. I guess it looks really cool, IMO. So we're gonna grind here until we get a um, key to rewards. We're gonna do our first uh, manipulation here. I haven't, I have not practiced this, so I don't know if it's gonna work. But we're gonna find out. So it doesn't for the manipulation, it doesn't matter what number the kingdom keys are. It just matters that there are kingdom keys and that they're in that order right there. So let's see if the manip works. One, two, three, four, five. Win. Take this. Oh I got it! Oh my god, we got it. That's crazy. <laughs> first try. Pretty much first try, the minute works. Holy shit. Battle card collector. Okay, no trophy. Nice. So we're gonna come back to Destiny Islands to um, get another key, key to rewards. This should be it. Wait, no, it's not White Knight. That's White Knight. He can't move. That wasn't the card, right? I don't think it was. Okay, so... The cards in my deck affect the RNG when we load it into the game. So, if we equip a certain deck, save the game, reload, 
the seed will be the exact same, and then if we do specific dodge rows after that, um, then we'll guarantee that the same thing will happen in the fights. And that's how we manip the enemy cards. Because getting the cards without doing it that way would take a long time, because if you just hope to RNG, like pray to RNG this. I can't friggin' talk because I've been talking for 15 hours. I just realized that if I had died at level 98 as Riku, I would have had to restart the entire grind. <laughs> I didn't even realize that before. But we didn't die, so it's fine. Uh, but that's really interesting. Oh, Treasure Hunter, nice. Okay, so we need 20 premium cards throughout the run. I'm gonna try to get a lot of them here. I want to say big shout out to Seb for linking me a doc that has a list of every enemy minip uh, in a really nice order. And then of course big shout out to Dessa for uh, routing a lot of the run as well. So I missed some chat. Oh, to become one? That's a crazy cube day, dang. Okay. Okay, there we go. Premium card maker, we did it. Hooray, we granted premium cards and we got the trophy. Nice. Okay, so this is a minip for Diamond Dust. There it is. Yep. Nice, okay. Nice! Now we just need one winged angel. Alright, so the white mushrooms I'm a little bit afraid of because apparently they're a little bit hard to do. Both the mushrooms, the white and black. Yeah, I've heard that they're both they're kinda weird. Yeah, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh my god, we got it. First try. That's crazy. <laughs> oh my god. Let's go. Uh, these are also kind of weird. That might not be good enough. Okay. You can use holy. <laughs> Never mind. Hang on. Oh, I got it. Okay. Nice. <laughs> yes, yeah, so use holy in that one. It's pretty cool. I like it. This one. Okay. So what we do is we use stop on the C neons, so we kill the screw divers before the neons, and that gives us the enemy card because they need to die last to get the enemy card. It's pretty cool. It's a really cool strategy. Watch this. <laughs> It's so cool. We use Marluxia so that we do another warp immediately after. And it works just in time. Oh, wow! Wait! Oh, for fighting all the Heartless, I think. Nice, we got a trophy. And we also got the Manip to work. Total Eclipse? What the heck, that's a crazy Keyblade. Nice! We did it! I think we have every enemy card. I think we got them all. I think we caught them all. We did, yeah. Zodan, let's go. Okay, hang on, let me see. Yeah, between Lexaeus and Cyax. I think I forgot to do that one. Okay, so now we're gonna do the Mugu Point stuff, which uh, I found a Manip for actually yesterday. Yesterday I stayed up and I found a Manip for 100 Acre Wood to give you a shit ton of Mugu points every run through. So we're gonna do that. We hit that. Go in. Hit that. Hit that. And this. And we get 80 already. Okay, then we go out. Go over here. Hit that. We get a lot. Hit that. We get a lot more. You do very particular movements here. You also get a fire card, guaranteed. And that's really cool because you can sell the fire card for 12. Then we get more from the, these right here. Yep. About 400 in total. It's 380, I believe. I think 7 gives you points here. Yep. Okay. There you go. It's a minip. I'm pretty proud of that minip. I think it's pretty cool. Because it's a consistent 380 points that you get every time. You have to angle Sora at the door. And then do an attack. And then right there you have to walk into the pots and do it. If you do it any other way. Then you're probably going to hit the, the wall by clanking on it. And that fucks up the manip. 
Or you might hit like an extra pot by accident. Um, the other way of doing it is to use Aladdin in Agrabah. But the problem with Aladdin is that it's luck if he ever shows up. And you can get a ton of points with him, but it also depends on how many hits you get with him. Uh, so you can do that method too and it might be faster if you're lucky. But I prefer the consistency of this. The plan here is to get one winged angel. And it should happen, but I'm not sure entirely. Oh, I got it! Oh! We got it! We got it! Oh, we got it. Okay. We got it. Oh my god, my, my throat is like dead right now. Oh, that was all the slates! We got Slate Master! Oh, we got him! <gasps> Dude! Card Master, we got every card. We did it! Record Keeper. That's 39 right there. I can't believe we got all the cards. That's crazy. <laughs> Holy cow. So our goal right now is to get 10,000 points at once. Because there's a trophy for that. So all you have to do is save, sell all your cards, get to 10,000 Moogle points, get the uh, trophy for buying... Um, I think you need to buy 15,000 worth of Moogle points. So get that right after. And then you are okay and you can just... Reloader save. There it is. Moogle Mogul. We got it. Now, guess what we do next? We level Sora to 99. Um, yeah, so Castle Oblivion gives you more EXP than Destiny Islands. But the problem is that there's a lot of bad enemies there, like Wizards. So I think because of Wizards, you can't Mega Flare, and enemies are just immune to Mega Flare or don't get one shot. Um,. So it's a lot faster here. You can use Holy in Castle Oblivion and you get more EXP that way, like per kill. But um, I believe this is the faster way overall on Destiny Islands. Um, it's not that complicated. It's a lot easier than the Riku grind. The Riku grind is like really difficult because you have to focus the entire time on grinding. The thing is, you're not intended to level night. Well, okay. So here's my theory, all right? You ready for my game theory? Here's a game theory for you guys. I don't think they intended for you to level grind to 99 in Recom ever. Like, they never really, like, that. it wasn't part of the game process. When they made the game, they weren't like, we gotta make sure you can level 99 efficiently. Um, but then when they made Plat, whoever dumb, whatever the dumb intern was that decided that they need to add a 99 trophy, they ruined the game. <laughs> They ruined the entire game. 7777 on the last level. That's actually crazy. This should be the last one here. Alright, guys, I think we did it. There it is. Level 99. Level Master Sora. We have leveled to 99 as Riku and Sora in the same. Sitting in the same speed run, and we are done with that. So to fully explain it, there's a trophy called. Oh, there's a bird outside. Okay, there's a trophy called Card Breaker, and in order to obtain the trophy, you need to break enemy cards 1,500 times. So we have the pirate, and we have summons. We spam zeros to keep breaking cards till we do it uh, 1,500 times. What? I've, I've never used this in my entire life. I've actually never used Sticker Bow in my entire life. We almost right here. We got it. There it is, card breaker. I don't know how many we got in that one sitting, but we got it. So now we have a trophy that requires us to edit the deck, I believe, 300 times. And the way that you do that is by entering the deck, hit edit, and then doing this. <laughs> what do you mean, you're stupid man? You gotta make sure that you're an expert at deck booting by editing the deck 300 times. Clearly, if you edit the deck 300 times, you're an expert. I think an alternate name for this trophy is Carpal Tunnel Syndrome. Hey, I think it'd be a great trophy if you edit uh, 500 cards in total for the deck. So that you're like an expert at deck booting at that point. Okay, Jim, I'll just make sure that they have to edit the deck 500 times. And that's what happens. There we go, expert deck builder, we did it. Alright, so one of the last trophies we have to get 
is making a lot of rooms. That's all it is. We have to make 300 rooms in total. And I'm pretty sure that counts for Riku and Sora. I hope it does anyway. If it doesn't, then we might be in trouble. I've definitely used a lot of rooms. Both Sora and Riku. We got it. Room creator. There it is. Now we are only missing one trophy before Plat. Are y'all ready for the last trophy here? Time for the special secret last trophy that I have not gotten yet. The most difficult trophy of them all. Harder than grinding Riku. This is a trophy. A striker hitting in Heartless with the box. And there it is, Plat. We did it! Let's go! <laughs> GG's, we did it, hooray! Uh, before I finish though, I just want to show off this stuff that I didn't actually know about until I watched the Plat run. Um, I did not know that these cards existed at all. I had no idea. Because, like, there's no way you'd ever get them Cash, I don't know. <laughs> You're not even required for Plat. So, like, I don't know. I never, 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 I don't know how you would find out about these, but... I believe once you finish the entire, uh, every card in the Jiminy's journal with Sora, and then you go into a chess room on Castle Oblivion, you get the gold card. It has a gold crown on it, actually. And you might be thinking, wait a second, that's pretty cool, but why is there no Mickey symbol on the card collection? Well, it's because if you make another room, you get the Platinum card, and we got the Platinum trophy, so it makes sense. And now we have finished the journal completely. Allows premium cards to be reloaded, prevents any damage to be received. It costs 99 CP. So I've never used this before, this is really weird. Uh, this is my first time ever playing the game, which I mentioned before. So it's right here. You just don't take damage. <laughs> We're invincible for tw wait. Oh! For like 20 of our own cards. Yeah, we're invincible until we use 20 cards. That's crazy. <laughs> like, what the heck? It's so OP. But it's weird because you're not gonna use it on anything. We've already finished the game. Alright. GG's. If y'all enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see y'all next time. Goodbye.